morning family tasha mom bear prepping so today let's get into it i got some sleep do i look like it i'm home got some sleep and we're about to talk about a topic that one of my subscribers actually in yesterday's video brought to my attention or mentioned right and <clears throat> i was like you know what it's been a while since i talked about this kind of sort of okay and you're gonna know why and but i believe this is this is my family's belief is like the number one thing or reason um that you would prep or need to prep right now um or or number one event that you need to prepare for is a massive blackout okay <clears throat> now and blackout meaning no power you guys so basically a situation where long term we do not have power um he mentioned in his actual thing hey can you talk about these blackouts that are happening everywhere now um what's crazy is when you go to research this there's not a ton of stuff out there but i hear word of mouth and we obviously deal with it um that i know there's a lot of blackouts happening okay i know of a lot around this area because obviously i see the news in this area a lot more um, and so I'm hearing about it, but there is a lot of blackouts. Now I talked about this before happening when we were having a, a huge threat of cyber attacks and with the heat and the drought and just all those factors that we were going to start seeing a, um, a more predominant, um, time frame with a lot of blackouts periods where they turn it off on purpose or something you know there's something that falters um and we have we have blackouts because of it okay um our infrastructure is shit right so there's a lot of reasons how we could get to the point of no power okay what makes me the most nervous me um in particular when it, we talk about and why i prep so hard for living with no power or a long-term blackout scenario is because i just think that it's so silly that we are such a you know strong country and yet our infrastructure is shit we have no real defense when it comes to yes over the last decade or two we've gotten much stronger with our cyber attack um and cyber you know defense right um but we're super vulnerable still to this day when it comes to cyber attacks and um you know just our enemy it would be so easy for our enemy to do this to us because it's twofold one they they attack us and they they attack our grid and we then don't have power but then it's twofold because we as a society are not the best with dealing with this on a small scale let alone something bigger um and we tend to turn we're we're doggy dog world like we we turn on each other right and so um you know it it would be it would be crazy okay if the enemy and if they're not already planning that i mean that's what we need to prepare for okay so it's no secret on this channel i talk about preparing for grid down all the time um and grid down i'm talking about everything but mostly that means how do you live life with no power okay this is something that you absolutely need to prepare your family more than the threat of war civil war more than the threat of you know aliens emp cme um a lot of those things are very valid things and definitely could happen this is this is more than preparing for this is i think is something you prepare more than you do almost a natural disaster i mean this needs to be at the top of your list of reasons and events that you need to get ready for because there's so many things to think about to get ready right yes you're gonna need food water right common sense no power think about a world where you can't just go out and get what you want and i'm not even talking to you guys right now about inflation and food shortages and like oh you can't get the food no i'm talking about you can't get the food because the stores are closed and there's no power okay um there's no power to keep the reefers and the refrigerators in the store to keep the food cold okay 
that's what I'm talking about. No power has a lot of scenarios or different branches that branch out and, and, um, are difficult to handle mentally. I think what's difficult to handle is, um, one, the fact that somebody cannot flip on a switch and just see in their home and do things. Okay. That's going to drive people crazy Two, the prepping or preparedness aspect of it, of you don't have the supplies needed to just live your everyday life with no power, meaning an alternate way to light your home, alternate ways to cook in your home. Um, simple things like that. How do you keep your food in your home cold if you can um, during when you have no power, right? Or do you just live a life with nothing? Do you have a power source? What does that power source look like? You need to get that stuff because this is something that's right around the corner. It could happen at any time and it literally could happen tomorrow, today, or it could happen a couple years from now, but it's inevitable. It is going to happen, okay? Whether it's a cyber attack, whether it's we don't get our shit together with the infrastructure. I mean, we're just sitting ducks right now, okay? So you need to do what you need to do. Let's talk about all the extra things. The, the third thing I was going to talk about, which is all the, um, the big part of society, okay? I'm not talking about any kind of age group right now, okay? I'm just going to say, in general, as a society, we are very techie. We are very um watching our shows we have our cell phones with us 24 7 um we're doing content we're watching shows we're gaming we're you know being entertained with numerous apps numerous things TikTok, you name it right and you don't even have to be into any of those things i just mentioned um and good for you if you're somebody who doesn't do any kind of like techie stuff right and you're not just savvy on all this stuff that's fine good for you um but even the people that are not into all those things that i just mentioned um, you'd be surprised how much grandpa is looking at the screen, watching his news channels and, 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 and his feeds and watching stuff and watching stupid videos and things like that. Okay. <clears throat> so there's a big part of society that is not literally not going to know what to do when they don't have that in front of them. Now the older generations, yes, that grew up without that stuff will be okay. They'll kind of revert and remember, oh, we did other things, right? We just went outside and did things we did projects we talked to each other we did more active stuff outside and walking around and doing things right um we read there was other things that we did to keep busy and it wasn't all about you know a stinking phone right um but the, but the younger generation is going to have a little bit more time um hard time getting wrapped around um, because even now some parents might do some sort of like, Hey, you, you're on a time limit or whatever. But I tell you what, when you completely take that away and then there's not something else to replace it, like, okay, you can't game, but there's something else to replace it, right? Another app, or you take the phone and tablet away, but there's the TV, you know, you take that away, but there's their friend stuff or whatever it is, you guys, there's a lot of technology that would just be done. It would be very, very quiet. And a lot of people, unfortunately, are not going to know what to do. Okay. And a couple things happen. Either people develop and evolve and adapt and, and be like, oh, okay, there's other things to do. Talking to people, seeing what's around you, paying attention, being present. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. But then there's some people that are going to go bad. Like, well, they've got to be doing something. Right. And it's not necessarily going to be good stuff. Okay. Um, idle hands, right? Let me just take my take a look at my notes, you guys. Quick light security. Um, <clears throat> with the internet. So some stuff to think about with the internet. So yes, will everybody, a lot of people go crazy because there's no internet, right? But we need to think about how dependent we are on the internet as well, right? You're dependent on it for GPS, how to get from one place to one place. Um, so you need to be downloading maps, buying maps, have maps and teach your kids about maps and how to get around places, right? Um, buy a local map and just go for a walk and kind of show them on the map what you're, where you're going, what you're doing, right? Um, recipes, food. We go to um, the internet for everything, to get an idea about this, to learn how to build this, to learn how to do this, to learn this recipe. Um, so 
start downloading the things that you like, start buying the books, start buying the manuals that you need for different projects. If there's projects around your house or things that you've been wanting to do, get on YouTube or get online on uh, the internet and download, you know, the steps or the how to do it stuff. Okay. You got to get your manuals, got to get your basics, um, get your books on how to just do basic maintenance on your car or how to do certain things in your home, right? A home maintenance manual book. Like those things that we run to the internet for are going to be invaluable um, during a time when we can't do things, right? All our electronic tools that help us do things think about those tools and think about if they're not plugged in and getting your hand hand tools again right whether that's a tool that's out in your shed to do something um think about the things you know you need a hammer you need some some hand stuff you can't just have all electric stuff right think about your tools in the kitchen that are plug in okay and think about getting your hand kitchen tools okay your hand things right replace the things that you know that are electric okay that take power um so that you have some backups okay let me look um okay and then a couple other little tips um you know how do you light your home lanterns different things build yourself a blackout box or a couple blackout boxes and in these boxes you just have them in your garage or in a closet and they just have all the things that you would kind of go to for a prolonged blackout scenario so um, all your lanterns, okay, different lanterns is good too, right? So you want your battery ran, you want some solar ones maybe, you want for long term, um, I would highly suggest that you start learning um, or investing in long term lanterns that take some sort of fuel, um, like kerosene or regular camp oil. Um, but so we have deets, de deets, I can't, I can't say it for some reason, I sound just crazy right now. Um, lanterns, I do have them in my affiliates below. I have a ton of stuff in my affiliate links below as well as far as solar generators, power generators, flashlights, lanterns, all types of stuff. So take a look at those. I do get a small commission, just so you know, it's very, very small. Um, but it will give you some ideas of some different stuff that is great supplies for a blackout grid down situation, okay? Um, for whatever you're looking for. But I would invest in some sort of long-term lanterns that you can actually hang around your home that would have a liquid um, fuel in them, okay? But there's several different things you can get. So in this blackout box, you'd have like that. You'd have extra flashlights, all your extra batteries. You'd have, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you'd have uh, candles, the matches. You'd have the long matches, um, Short matches, right? Regular matches, long matches. I'd have lighters, so regular lighters, long light, uh, lighters. Um, let's see what else. You'd have your glow sticks, just all the things for a blackout scenario, okay? To just make your life a little bit easier. Um, I would station different things around your house, right? So some good high-powered flashlights, uh, excuse me, or smaller lanterns around your house. We have them in the bathrooms just in case, you know, you don't get caught with your pants down excuse me, in the dark. Um, but just be thinking about that. Think about security, how you would do that. Think about having security lights outside your home that are solar that um, will work. And you can either put these up and have them part of your security system now, or what we have is we have our security system, our everyday security system inside and out. Um, but we have some that are in packaging and put away that we will slap on trees and different last minute locations um, that will be a little bit darker that we want to make sure that we can see okay even having um those those sticks those solar lights that you stick into the ground that light your pathways or light your gardens or whatever you can have those out now but then also um, we have some of those that are put away as well that we could again last minute put out wh wherever we need them okay maybe some non-traditional pathways or whatever that we would use them for okay just think about the things that you do every day and how you would do those with no power. You need to have lots of fire stuff, stuff to start a fire, kindling, different kindling, different stuff for starting fires in the in the um, rain, um, having different wood, um, you know, figure out what you're gonna do. Do your things, invest in your things. If you own a home and you're able to, hey, let's invest in a, another stove. Maybe you're on the grid, you you have power, you have air. But maybe in your home, you can install a nice little 
um, gas stove, maybe you have gas, or maybe you can install a wood stove that you never use, but in a grid down situation, a long-term situation, you could burn wood to keep your home warm. You could cook on top of it as well, like soups and stews and stuff. So just really think about what you have in your home um, to live in some sort of situation because blackouts are happening. People are going weeks, days and weeks without um, power. And I don't know if you've ever gone weeks without power. That's not fun, you guys. It's very difficult. And what's crazy is, you know, some of those situations, it's just an area and you're able to drive out of it and still get stuff, still get gas, still get food, still get maybe go to a hotel or go to the internet and look something up. Um, but what I'm talking about is one, you prepare for that little stuff, right? We're, that's what you prepare for. But you need to be thinking about the plan on a way bigger scale and what you would do if you didn't have it for two weeks, three weeks, two months, um, and what that looks like and start making your supply list now to get the things. Now, what I would like to hear in the comments below is just, you know, um, wh how's it looking? Okay. Because the news isn't talking about blackouts that much, um, you know, let us know in the comments below if you're in, in an area that's been having blackouts. Let us just know basic state. You can say cities if you want, um, but say how long that did it last. And if you know anything, you know, affected this many people or whatever. Okay. And let's just see if we can kind of put a snap picture quickly to let people know that are watching this, you know, the seriousness of this. Um, since we've been here probably in the last six months, we've lost power three times. Um, when we lose it here, it, I don't know if it's them doing it on purpose or if it's something happened. Um, but typically we've been blessed. It goes off, it comes back on, it goes off and comes back on. So it literally does that two or three times, um, within about five hour period. Okay. So it hasn't been crazy. Every time it goes off, we're like, we're ready, right? We, we are like beyond ready. Right. But, um, yeah, we, we've been blessed. However, just right up the street, there's been neighborhoods that have gone off for, you know, days, right? Thousands and thousands of people with no power, okay? The county's over, whatever. So there's all types of stuff going on. There's a lot of reasons why the power could go off, right? Whether they're doing it on purpose to conserve power or there's fire concern or, or whatever. The, there's a wind concern. Um, but what I'm talking about is, yeah, you you're ready for those moments, but the infrastructure is so bad. It's like, what if times where they start doing that and then all of a sudden it doesn't come back on because something has failed too far. It's gone too far. Um, or like I said, what I, what I plan for is I, I a hundred percent believe, you know, cyber attacks are going to come one day. The enemy is coming. Um, it's going to be either our grid because we didn't get our shit together and protect ourselves enough, or it's going to be a huge cyber attack. And they know that, you know, if they take the power down, that's huge. That's huge for our mental game as a society um, because we're so, you know, dependent on tech and internet and our things, right, that just make us happy in life. So um, this is not one to ignore. This is one you want to pay attention, take notes, watch other videos, watch other channels, pay attention, write down your supplies list and get this stuff because I don't, I don't know how much more time you have. And trust me, when you go without power for a couple weeks, even and that's short, it's hard if you don't have the things, you guys. It's hard. You're going to struggle. Your family's going to struggle. Okay. And why? When you could just get the things and get things done and get ready so that you're um, prepared, but you've continued that. And eventually you can go through this way more than two weeks, three weeks, two months, you won't be struggling the more you get done. And don't stress out, okay? I get it. You don't have money to just get all these things all at once. That's fine. Just like before, do your list, write it out, prioritize it for your family. You sit down with your significant other and your kids. You figure out what's the most important thing to get first and you get those things in the order of importance, okay? So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys tomorrow in the next video. Take care.